Thank you for listening to or watching the Upland Down Under podcast. Tonight's show is recording live on Wednesday, the 30th of August at 7.30 p.m. AEST. On tonight's show, going to catch up on some crypto and Upland market news, of course, and then dive into some general Upland news, including wrapping up on some of the latest Tokyo goings on and the August neighborhood ratings collection battle. Uh, tonight's main topic will be about totems. I'll try and touch on some of the stuff related to that. Have you got your head around it yet? I sure haven't, and I'll be buggered if I can work out some of it. And I can't say that I'm a massive fan of some of the garish color schemes either, but uh, more on all that later. Uh, we got some Web3, of course, and some Meet Suitiverse news to cover. Equips on upland taxes and fees and another one on the long-term market potential of totems, which is timely for our discussion. And, of course, I'll be outlining a new weekly contest challenge for the NBA server. All that and more on this, the Upland Down Under podcast. If you are wondering how you can take part in the live recordings of this podcast, it's pretty lonely at the moment. It's just me and LeBan. Well, you have to be in the NBA server, the link to which is in the description. I drop the link to the Zoom, sorry, every Wednesday night at about 7.15 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, there is a little link in the description as well. You can check what that is for your own time zone. All right. As we always do, let's have a look at the breaking matter news and take a look at what's currently happening in some of the crypto and upland markets. And well, what do you know? What do you know? See if I bring it up. This one. What a difference a week makes. Uh, last week, we were lots of red in the cryptos. This week, green, 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 green. So just when I was kind of had my finger on the trigger of restarting my dollar cost averaging again, what do you know? We're well and truly back over... 1 trillion market cap again, we're 1.09 trillion. That's 3% jump from last week. Bitcoin dominance, pardon me, is up 1.2% to 48.9% as well, pushing back towards that 50% mark. Bitcoin itself up 5.1%, was 26,000 and change last week, now 27,500. Nice little healthy boost there. Similar pretty much all across the board for the coins we cover. Um, Ethereum up 4.3%, 1,720. Wax, timely boost up 1.2%, uh, up to just under 0.041. Not much else happening else. Anywhere else, what do we got? Ripple, Solana, all, you know, 2, 3, 4% boosts. Um, Cardano's back up to 27 cents. What else was standing out? Not much. Avalanche, just all green, green, green. Good to see Gala. It's got their... 0.02, but um, yeah, if, if you look for them, the decimals, that's up 4.5%. And the fear and greed index has pushed back into the neutral, heading back to that, I think last week it was on 39 and fear, and this week we're back to 42 and neutral. So nice to see. Will it last? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. For upland market news, the 90-day average trading volumes, um, as expected, the... The transaction volume went up a touch. I think this is the very leading of the Tokyo data just probably starting to filter through. But interesting to see that the trading volume has continued to slide. Uh, unique active wallets also took a big drop down 10.4%. Was just under 60,000 unique active wallets last week. Back under 54,000 this week. Total unminted properties. Uh, we had 2,140 properties minted through the week. That's probably a lot to do with the Tokyo collection reveal, which we'll get on to in a second. And percentage of properties minted, um, that means like of how many unminted, uh, we're still 92% is minted as currently. City stats a bit all over the place. Um, you know where to start here. We've got the battle of the buy for UPX and sell for USD still going on in San Francisco, although interesting, that has slowed down considerably. I've been buying up the UPX floor and listing at the USD floor previously. The last, I don't know, four, three, at least the last three months, pretty much as fast as you could list them at the floor, they generally get gobbled up within, say, an eight-hour period. But now I'm seeing these sit for upwards of 24 hours just sitting there at the floor, so... Things appear to have slowed down considerably unless they've moved to one of these other markets. Like I've got Dallas highlighted in green there because it's for the cities that I cover with this here. That's kind of that's kind of the best deal at the moment. Buy for what's that? 11,500 UPX and sell for $6.80. That's kind of the narrowest spread. Um, what else is happening? Santa Clara's had a boost on the USD, which is interesting. 
up 7.7%. Los Angeles has been dropped on the USD outflow, down a whopping 20, 26%. And it's, I believe when I had a look before, there was about a dozen on that $3 mark. I've sold several of those through the week, $3.50, $3.20, $3.10, all the way down to $3. So it'll be interesting to see if somebody's going to come and gobble those up again. Uh, Rutherford has also been smashed on the USD out. Last week was just under $13. Now it's down 30% to under $10. Wow. Similarly for London, down 15.2%. That's chunky, chunky. And I can't really see Tokyo because Zoom's in the road. Let me see. There we go. Well, we got Tokyo last week and the UPX was 18,500 down 8.8% to 17,000. Pretty grand figures there. Not much happening on the USD there, which is interesting. But again, I, I purchased a couple of those to flip and they just kind of sat there not doing much. So not sure. I'm going to have to play around and see see where the money's been spent because it certainly doesn't appear to be in San Francisco. Maybe it's gone back to Manhattan. What's happening there? Just under 60,000. Yeah, it appears to be. That looks a bit like it. Last week, just under 60,000. The UPX buyers have pushed that to 62,500. And then selling for USD, that's dropped from just under $25, as I said, to $24. So hmm. maybe that's where it is. Have to wait and see. But good to see the Bitcoin and the other shitty coins bouncing back. See what happens there. All right. Now, Upland News. Last week, uh, one of the things that I talked about was um, there was that latest podcast appearance by Dirk. I did did watch that through the – well, I listened to it through the week. Um, I was hoping there was going to be some some meat in amongst the potatoes, but it was basically just a very kind of introductory sort of a thing. It was more for somebody who perhaps had never heard of Upland. Dirk kind of outlined the whole story and some of the vision of where things were headed and that there wasn't a whole lot worth in there if, if you're already well established in the upland community i don't think you missed out on anything if you hadn't already seen it so maybe skip that one i've got that down in my notes as meh that pretty much sums it up um what else did we have through the week upland stuff well we had the tokyo collection reveals of course now i didn't get up at the 2 a.m for that but I did manage to jump on over and get myself um, a Jinga Mai set. I already had one there because Jinga Mai was on my tail when I first first um, woke up. So I grabbed two more properties there. That was a bit, I think I paid 80000 upex each for them, which was a bit more than I was wanting to spend. But I don't know. What do you do? You flip that one properly or you buy two more? And there was, there was plenty there unminted, so I decided to buy them. Dogen Zaka, of course, the rare one that was all minted out. There's no way I was going to FOMO into that. So I just went for the one that I had. Yo Yogi, interesting to see that because that's kind of a, a community node collaborative that's kind of kicked off with that. So that's that's pretty good for that team that started to establish that. Already got your collection stats. How, how about that? And then, of course, there was the um, the ultra rare ones, the gastronomy and the Shibuya Scramble. Um, some people so close yet so far. I saw a few of those just missed out on getting their yellow one. That's going to be ouch. I think what's worse is if you manage to get one of them. But look at that three for an ultra rare collection. Oh, that's. I don't think there'd be many people that had the full set there. So if you do have one, you could probably flip that for some for some juicy profits. So see how you went. It's always the gamble, though. I think um, with that with that set that I had in Chingamai and the the big set I purchased in Shibuya, the actual neighborhood Shibuya, it's got me very close to one point eight six five uh, million upex per month. So I'm trying to push back to that two million mark. So we'll see how we go. How'd you go? Did you score big? Let us know. Of course, the other major news through the week was that we had the Tokyo Block Explorer sale. I I wasn't planning to get up for this one. I did register for them and I happened to get up. I believe I got up. The actual sale started at 2 a.m. my time. I think I got up like 2.30 or something to go to the toilet. And I thought, oh, well, I'll just check it out. And I was actually able to buy all three. So that was pretty cool. Um, currently for sale in Midtown Terrace, if you want to go over there and pick them up if you missed out. And then, of course, the Tokyo Thrifty Trader. I like the art. 
thrifty trader. I like the artwork on that. It looks pretty cool. Um, I never get involved in any of these myself, but every now and then you still end up on the on the um, leaderboard if you're buying, selling, trading, flipping properties in the area before or after collection reveal. I don't see my name there. I don't see many recognizable names there that I know of. Um, Trills, Hind, Scientist, I know that name. Ustag, of course. There's a few there. There's pretty good prizes in that, though. So well done if you managed to score big there. Now I'm going to close some of these. So my poor old laptop can handle it. What else have we got? I think we're on to... Oh, neighborhood ratings. Yes. Um, what do we got left? It's 30th of August here. So we've got a couple of days left. Um, Hell's Kitchen has well and truly got uh, August in the bag, of course. Midtown Terrace, surprisingly enough, has managed to cling on to second place. Um, not that we've done anything except for secure those extra meta ventures, as I mentioned last week. So not sure if we're going to go for a push next month or not. I'm leaning on the probably not side because I I need to get a few things squared away before I do anything there myself. So that's the official Upland neighborhood ratings leaderboard. Well, what's better than that? Well, we do have Rock Drigo, of course. He puts out his data set um, he was doing it daily but as he mentioned on our old show and a few other places that he's um, got a lot going on at the moment so he's not updating as often as he would probably like so yes hell's kitchen well and truly um, has august wrapped up and then we've got kind of a three-way battle there we've got midtown terrace of course is the the first ever node in Upland, the Genesis node. We've got Monero, which is a massive community project there as well. And Holliswood, which I believe is Radish Head's node that he spearheads. So it's kind of a three-way battle there. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see there. I guess we'll I guess I'll um, put the feelers out and just see what people want to do. I would assume that there's lots of folks associated with the UDU that are already associated with Monero. So we'll just have to wait and see. No rush. We'll get there eventually because then there is a big massive gap back to Red Hawk. But we'll wait and see. Da, da, da. Sorry. Hey, Lily, I'm just catching up on chat. You just scraped into the top 200, David. Well, well done to you. Yeah, I can't, when I'm doing share screen, I can't see chat, unfortunately. So congratulations, as I said, to the, the Manhattan team. I know they're planning away on what they're going to go to next, go for next. So don't be surprised to see another Manhattan um, neighborhood suddenly start climbing the ranks as well. Who knows? So they've pretty much got a system down pat there, I think. Good on them. Well, I'm going to race through this tonight. I said the, the main topic is protum totem stem. Of course, that was the huge news that came out. Like last week when we were talking about stock cars, I was like, uh, is this, you know, a temporary diversion before something else big comes? And of course, yeah, what do you know? A couple of days later, well, I think it might have been the day later, we had the, the sneaky peekies properly announced. Now, Upland has put out just an absolute crap ton of stuff related to this which i don't know I'm, i've been trying to keep up with it through the week and kind of reading bits and pieces of it and i think it's all it's done is just to confuse me even more so um bear with me i'm going to go through some of this some of this here now and see if i'm going to wrap my head around it because like i said on on first take through i was just getting confused totems protem stem life there's all sorts of stuff happening here so we do, do know that totems they're they're being manufactured at the moment um yeah, I believe there's, well, maybe I can just go straight to that now. If you if you want to check out where that's been man manufactured, if you go to upxland.me, you can search the users, search for Upland Bureau, click on Outdoor Decor, and then it's pretty easy to see um, all of the totems that have been manufactured. There's addresses there, Gold Street in LA, um, Madison Ave in Fresno. I think they've got four or maybe five. I know there was a... Nashville one, yeah, Bear Hollow in Nashville and a LA one. Well, oh, that was the first one. Oh, no, there we go, LA, Remit Ave. So they got a bunch of factories pumping all of this stuff out. And you can actually go to the properties as well and check them out. I mentioned at the start, I don't really, can't say I'm a mad fan of the color palette. It might just be the LODs, the 
when you submit outdoor decor, you've got to do different lods, which I'm not a blender artist by any stretch of the imagination, but it's like a, like different, um, however many pixels you can see for different um, scroll out sort of things. The further away you see it, it's less detailed. Um, I don't know. They look pretty ordinary. Is this is this the life that's coming to Upland that's going to be all over the place? Hmm. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. What's chat saying? Anybody loving them? Chat's very quiet. You loving the totems? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, they look, they look interesting. Yeah, Lily, you do. Hmm. All right. Maybe I'm just being a whiny old bastard as per usual. Anyway, let's go back where I was. I can close that down now. We had a look at that. Oh, we're skipping ahead. Let's have a look here. So totems bring life to Upland. The adventure begins. The time has come. Blah, 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 blah. We'll reveal 11 life forms, each contributing to a total of 5,555 totems. Now, why that number? It's an interesting number. What are they actually trying to do here? I had a... It made me think... Um, Made me think about some of the articles that I read with On One Force, or however you say, I say Oni Force, um, the partnership they did. Oni Force have 7,777 of their NFTs. Um, other projects like CryptoPunks famously have 10,000. Board Ape Yacht Club have 10,000. Uh, v Friends has 10,255, something like that. So it seems to be a thing with these kind of major nft projects they like to have a fancy number as the maximum kind of thing um yes i did see ricey did does have a great totems document that he put out um i did mean to get that up too um i'll put the link in the description for that anyway i'll find that when i do the back end so yeah why 5555 seems kind of weird to me so 11 life forms, of course, we don't know how many of each. And it's it's kind of strange that the 11 life forms, because we've seen they, uh, it looks like they're going to be paired up. Like we have the dragonfly and the palm. They kind of seem to go together as a set. Um, that's only the chapter one. But yeah, 5,555 totems. Now, I just said at the start that we had 50... I don't know. I forget what it was. 53,000 unique active wallets. So you're talking about you've got 10 times the amount of totems that are going to be available. You've got 10, 10 times the amount of unique active wallets over the week. That's That seems weird. Like 10% of your active users are going to have a chance at these. And we know with, it seems like they're going to go ahead with a system where it's, you have to register for the sale and then, of course, the register registration process is just an absolute crap crapshoot. And you know, if for us in this call now, if if you're in this time zone, um, it's two a.m. It's going to be a sale at two a.m. So it's one of these things where you got to register for this thing. You got to wake up at two a.m. to see where you are in the list to see if it was even worth waking up at two a.m. Um, you may have to then sit awake for one, two hours. Who knows if you want to have a chance uh, because there's no KYC requirement involved for registering for these sales. It just becomes a multi accounters paradise. It, I hate it. I wish they'd just get rid of the bloody thing um, or make it so you have to be KYC verified to register. I know there's pros and cons in that, but I think that I think the pros vastly outweigh it because what are we going to see? We're going to see swags of multi accounters you know, just absolutely cleaning these up and selling them on the secondary markets. So I don't know. There's a, there's going to be, same with the early releases of cars. There's just going to be crap loads of people that miss out and, you know, I'm not going to be very happy about it. Yeah, just a random number. I don't think it's, you don't just pull a random number out of your ass like that. When has Upland ever done that? 5,555 has to be, it has to be some kind of planning there. Like I said, many other NFT projects, they do that on purpose. Oni Force being a classic example. So yeah, Swali129 says, I'm with you, Ben. Registration is a joke. I've never even been close to a terminal. Not that I could fool my followers. Yeah. I haven't had much luck except for the um, I was lucky enough to get in one of the very first sales a semi truck. So yes, but I don't know. 
I just think all, all you're going to do is, like I said, pad the pad the accounts of multi accounters. Yeah, sure, they might eventually end up in jail, but then well, what's the deal there? If if they do, if they are successful in tracking down these multi accounters and they jail all their accounts, well, then they're going to have a whole bunch of these totems locked up, never to be used again. So I don't know. Yes. So I have to wait and see on that one. But yes, of course, I'll be registering. Um, I will be getting up at 2 a.m. As much as I hate it, I've whined about it. I've said for years and years and years, this is an international game. You need to start catering to your international audience. But that has fallen on deaf, deaf ears. So, yeah, I will get up. I will have a crack at it and just try your luck. If you do manage to get yourself one, um, yeah, then the choice becomes, do you sell it for a hefty profit or do you hold on it? Well, he said, had loads of car chances early on. Yeah, some people some people just got that RNG vibe. They just got the luck. Um, I know of several people who were able to mint cars at will pretty much on in every sale. It wasn't until probably the last probably the last oh, three or four sales that I even had a chance. I didn't lost count of how many times I got up at 2 a.m. just to look at that. My, you know, your 1,000th in line. So you just roll your eyes and you roll over and try to go back to bed. So I have to wait and see. But, yeah, I'll definitely be grabbing one if I can, but don't like my chances. I have a lot of luck in this game. Quick, Lily, touch some wood. That's You're very brave putting those words out there. Yeah, you won't catch me saying something like that. So where are we? I'll go back to that because there was, there was some pretty cool imagery and stuff that was put out as, as far as the totems go. Um, so, yes, we know that this this first two pairings, the dragonfly and the palm tree, I believe, it's just chapter one, the jungle's call to adventure. Ba, 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 ba. What are totems there? This is where it starts getting all a bit, um, a bit eye glazy. So... Protum is the pretend one for totem. Protums and totems are going to create stem and life. I don't know. It's, why are they going to make things so confusing? We are utilizing totems as a test and a way to prepare for life in upland. upland. So, yes, I don't know. Totems will be available for purchase through a series of mystery pass sales. So this is another interesting um, aspect of it as well. You're not actually buying the totem itself. If you're buying a pass that you will then redeem for the totem. So it'll be interesting to see if we can do selling on those on the secondary markets prior to that all coming online. I believe I heard that that was true. And then, yeah, you got to exchange them. And then maybe somebody in chat can correct me, but I believe the, well, I was going to say it's, it's a randomized process, but if you look at one of these, it might not be here. There's one of these um, images where they show that there's different price points for different ones. So is that going to be the different rarities? I don't know. Let me see. Anybody in chat? Don't know. Can't tell. Uh, maybe somebody can clue me in on that because I'm going to first clue with that myself. But what a stem and protum. Well, you're going to have to read up on all this yourself. All of the stats and the traits and the outputs and the inputs. I really personally, I got no interest whatsoever in, in that. Um, yeah, you're going to have to, it's kind of like a Tamagotchi thing where you've got to try and maximize it to get a certain amount of output. But that kind of seems bizarre to me as well. Like it seems like these things have a finite life period. Like, I believe it might have been might have been Dan or somebody in one of these chats was talking about how like if you had a cow, it's going to produce a certain amount of milk and there's efficiency levels with milk. And then once it's it's maximized its milk output, then what are you just going to have all these burnt out animals all over the map map? Yes, yeah, so it's just the testing mechanics for STEM and what's to come. Yeah. So um, yeah. Sorry, just keep catching them on chat. Yeah, it's all testing, man. It goes, it threads back to the whole, before we had um, Spark, we had Spud and all of that, which was a bit of fun. The difference there was that we got airdropped Spud of a certain amount of Spud to play with. And there was all sorts of competitions and that. This just seems like they go on full market aspect, which I guess it makes more sense. Why not, instead of just putting it out there as freebies for it to test, why not make us pay for it? 
pay to better test. It's an interesting angle. So I guess these will become kind of interesting collectibles in the future. But yeah, we get to keep the map asset, yeah, on the back end. I don't know. Wait and see. But yeah, somebody spent a lot of time putting all of this together. It looks pretty cool. I just some of these color combos, maybe it, it might be in this one, is it? So this is another thing that kind of gets a bit confusing too. Like it's, you go to the main page here and it says, oh, click on this one and you see more information. And then we've also got a wiki and there's this and that. So yeah, somebody spent a lot of time putting all that together. We got three days, 13 hours and 12 and three minutes before registration begins. Learn more chapters. So yeah, we do know this is the jungle's call. Five chapters. Now we're going to see these pushed out. What do you think? One a month? Five months worth of testing? Are we going to be test, still testing this stuff in a year? I wonder how far they're going to push it. And then, yes, I don't know. Some of these. I'm going back to the colors again. We've got green. We've got blue. We've got gold. We've got purple. We've got red. And we've got brown. No, I guess I was hoping to see more lifelike stuff, but perhaps that's I'm jumping too far ahead where this is the test version. It's not the actual in real life version. Ah, yes, this is the, the screenshot that I was talking about. So let me do grandpa zoom here. Now, not that one, don't load. So this is interesting. So we've been, there's been a bit of speculation kicking around as well, what are these going to cost? Um, now we've got here a mystery pass. Well, they're all mystery passes. There's a version here that's 2,000 UPEX, 5,000 UPEX, 10,000 UPEX, 25,000 UPEX. You always have to take these screenshots that they do and use in their um, advertising with a grain of salt because some of them are just wildly, wildly hilarious. So I did a couple of nights ago, I was going through and sharing a few from way back in the day that were just hilarious. So I don't know, 2,000? Hmm. Interesting, 2,000 up to 25,000. And there's another button after there, I would assume, based on that, it's going to be a 50,000. Wait and see. What do we think, chat? Pretty sure they're just numbers for numbers sake. Yeah, I, I, I would. that would be my guess too, based on history. <laughs> the answer's 5,550 days of testing. Ha, that's funny. Yes, so ooh, I'm still in grandpa size. Frequently asked questions. There's lots of questions there. Now, I have seen, I know YK2012 has put out a bunch of videos on explaining all this as well. Um, I've only caught one or two of those myself. I haven't really dived into them as well. Um, I don't know. I'll just be grabbing what I can and playing with what I can. And yeah, just to bring it up and round it off, there is a, there is a wiki article there that goes into a few more details. What are totems? Blah, 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 blah. What are stem and protom? So you, you can check all that yourself. I don't know. Is anybody, we've got a few people in chat. Is anybody just all over the place? You know this, you love it, you can't wait. You know, you've got your mind perfectly wrapped around what all this is. Or are you still hmm, humming and hurrying? To be honest, yeah, I'm really unsure about the whole procedure of things, just that I want in. That's all I know. Yeah. I'm pretty much the same. It's yeah, a lot of people are the same. Yeah, Levan's are the same. Haven't dug into it, but I'll buy it. Yeah, uh, are, are we suckers for that? We're just going for whatever. Give us new stuff. Yep. It's shiny. It's shiny. Give so, me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, makes smart business sense, as I said. But well, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, buy at least one of each if you can. Yeah, especially if the price is going to be that cheap. <laughs> They're not going to last very long. I, if I had to guess, I would think they're going to be way more than that with such a limited supply. But because what have we got? Five thousand five hundred and fifty-five with five chapters. Was it? It's, uh, it's not a lot to go around when you're talking about, as I said, fifty-five thousand unique active wallets active through the week. Not a lot of stuff there to go around. But if you do manage to grab some. Good on you, lucky you. All right, that's all I really want to talk about that because, like I said, it's still all evolving. Now, I did do a bit of clickety-clacking around. Now, you would think, you would think with something like that, something big like that coming out, I think that kind of, that kind of transition into what they're trying to do with life and, you know, the species 
the species um, partnership and whatnot they've got going on there with the, you know, the cross metaverse collaborations. You would think that this would generate a few headlines about the place. And what do you know? I did actually manage to find a couple of articles. So I haven't had a look at these in any detail myself, but here we are at playtoearn.net. Upland reveals totems, a collection of living map assets. Totems are a collection of living map assets that Upland players will be able to nurture and acquire through mystery passes. These new NFTs are split into 11 different life forms with the first two palm tree and dragonfly revealed so far. Yep, we know all that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Now what's, and it goes on to mention here the exchange system and then you, it says, hey, you'll be able to get it. You'll be able to get your hands on totems by buying Mystery Pass. Yes. Um, you'll have to register 24 hours in advance. Yes. Now, whenever I've covered any of these NFT projects that are advertising things that are coming out, it all almost always says the price. I think it's a bit of a, I think it's a missed opportunity not to put the price in there. Well, then if they did put the price in there, would they then have to explain what UPX is and all of the rest of it? I don't know. And then there's another one over here at chainplay.gg, which is pretty much follows, follows similar suit. So Totem's Upland's new living game asset introduces a unique phase of gameplay and then pretty much just does the same thing. Outlines the registration and launch dates. Um, and then yeah, a couple of quotes, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Kind of goes back to one of the gripe, gripes I have about city releases. Like I wish, wish they'd go back to the old system where we had the neighborhood lines, we could see the properties, we could see the, the prices, you know, weeks in advance. It gives you more time to plan, prepare for. Um, same for any of these types of sales. I don't know why they just don't put the prices out there. Let us know so we can budget. Maybe they're really going for that hardcore FOMO aspect. Don't know. Squeeze the last drops of Upex and USD out of your account. Always release this. Yes. Don't know. All right. Let me see. Was that all I wanted to cover there? Yeah, that's all on that. So just going to quickly run over some web three news we'll do some horrendous in real life news and then we've got a couple of good quips and then we'll get out of here nice and early this week i hope so what's happening in the wider web three sector this is interesting uh we know that roblox is making big waves all over the place at the moment this is a nice little artsy fartsy one the met and roblox partner to bring art to the metaverse now we did see when COVID was all starting to kick off and everyone was in lockdown there was a bunch of um, museums and things started to do like uh, online experiences where you could go in and and um, vir you could explore it wasn't it wasn't really virtual spaces it was more like cameras set up and this that, and the other thing so I guess we kind of knew this system was coming to take it to the next level and here we are so the Metropolitan Metropolitan Museum of Art commonly known as the Met has joined forces with Roblox um, if you don't know what Roblox is by now, either you've got your head in the sand or you don't have any kids, um, Roblox is just absolutely killing it in the metaverse and Web3 space. So the Met's going to put their vast collection um, onto Roblox and, you know, they're going to, what do they say here, leveraging Roblox as immersive gaming environment and large user base. Yeah, you're talking millions of daily active users, not tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands. I believe it's tens of millions, which is crazy to think about. So, yeah, it goes on to explain what the Met is, what Roblox is. So the through the collaboration, the Met and Roblox are not only creating a virtual museum, but also incorporating interactive elements and immersive exhibits using virtual reality and augmented reality, which is those together, I believe. It's XR tech. Visitors can embark on guided tours, participate in art-related minigames, and even collaborate with others to create art within the virtual environment. So suck it, kids. You're going to be playing and you're going to learn some stuff even at the same at the same time. So Roblox's integration of replicas of renowned artwork such as Van Gogh's Starry Night and the ability for users to purchase dis digital items like the iconic straw hat worn by Van Gogh. That's interesting. So you're talking about some um, in-game purchases. 
So you can deck out your little avatars, characters that run around, it enhances the educational and entertaining aspects of the virtual museum experience. That's very cool. Collaboration between the Met and Roblox represents the exciting possibilities that arise when art and tech converge. As the tech continues to evolve, the art world can leverage its potential to engage a larger audience, create immersive experiences and explore new artist artistic realms. The future of art and tech collaboration holds vast potential, paving the way for groundbreaking innovations and experiences in the world of art. Yeah, I think this is just the very start of where we're headed. What do we got to chat? <coughs> Ooh, yeah. I think that's just the very start of where that is headed and seems to be good um, evolution, as I said, from those earlier covid -y camera based experiences, getting the kids involved, you know, getting them in there, earn some coins, learn some stuff, get some cool stuff to deck out your avatar characters and get kids engaged. Why not? Speaking of avatars, this next one is a doozy. Now we do know Meta has kind of famously gone all in on the metaverse and then it pivoted away and seemed like it was chasing AI. Well, it seems like they're headed back there and now they're going back there on legs. Meta's avatars finally grow some legs. They're only available to better testers for now. Now, one of the things when I've covered this article, this kind of topic previously was that the new Meta headsets were going to be able to track your feet movements and that so it's going to be see what that's if that's what it's all about so it says here it's been nearly a year since meta announced at connect 2022 that it would give its weird casper the friendly ghost-esque metaverse avatars some legs to make them appear slightly more human yes not just the floating torsos the day of reckoning is upon us as the quest home avatars now support extra limbs in the latest better version of the quest software you won't see legs on your avatar when you look down as upload vr points out they'll only be visible in third person or when you're looking at a virtual mirror. Oh, that's weird. So if you're wearing the headset and you look down, you've got no legs. But if you look in the mirror, you see your legs and other people can see your legs. This makes sense as there's no leg tracking option on any current consumer virtual reality system. Mm -hmm. Must have been the experimental one that we were reading about last previously. It means Meta doesn't have to worry too much about having accurate leg animations instead of, I don't know, wacky OWAP style physics. <laughs> it seems your avatar's legs won't crouch in third person view when you bend your knees or sit down. That can make things a little awkward when you're trying to maintain eye contact as much as possible in VR spaces. That sounds very clunky, which is bizarre considering how well um, some of the other spaces do it, spatial, etc. Mm. But then you're talking about virtual reality goggles, not just, um, you know, web-based systems. So curiously, Meta said last year that legs will roll out to worlds first before making their way to other avatar-friendly experiences. Blah, 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 blah. Legs. Who would have thought legs would be such a huge news thing? Yes. All right. Now, these next couple of ones is all about, that's the kind of fun laughing, ha-ha side of things. Well, this all starts to get a bit more serious and a bit more real with some of this other stuff that's kicking off. The SEC is just absolutely all over the place at the moment in regards to Metaverse, NFTs, Web3, crypto. Um, every other week, there's some article where they're suing people that's getting overturned. They're trying to get their head around it. Um, and this week's no different. So the SEC in turmoil, according to the Bitcoinist.com, internal rebellion erupts over NFT showdown regulators at war, question mark. So in a recent development, two prominent commissioners at the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, uh, Mark and Hester, have expressed their dissent against the agency's enforcement action on NFTs. As reported by Bitcoinist on Monday, the SEC had initiated legal proceedings against media and entertainment company Impact Theory, which resulted in a cease and desist order and a substantial penalty of over $6.1 million. Whoa. I believe that next article goes in more detail there too. So the commissioners known for their support of innovation within the crypto industry voiced their disagreement with the SEC's classification of certain NFT sales as securities. Um, 
again, it, a lot of this stuff comes down to the wording of how these things are promoted and put out there for sale. Um, you, you can get yourself in a world of trouble very quickly. So they emphasize their concerns about applying the Howie analysis, a legal framework used to determine whether an investment contract exists. They called for a deeper e examination of the issues surrounding NFTs before pursuing additional enforcement actions. Yeah. So what this kind of points towards is just a general, like a lot of this tech, even, even cryptocurrency, it's the tech is barely even getting established yet and they're just cracking down cracking down maybe it's because they want their piece of the pie or you know regular regulators just got to regulate so um what does it say here the settlement involving impact theory centered around allegations of the company engaging in an unregistered security offering through the sale of nfts while the settlement did not include fraud charges Impact Theory agreed to pay disgorgement, prejudgment, interest, and civil penalties. Yeah, 6.1 million ain't no joke. However, the case highlighted the company's sale of nearly 30 million worth of NFTs. Well, that's not too bad. Earned 30 million and then pay 6 million in fines. I don't know. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> so what else do we say yet? Should NFTs fall under securities laws? Here we go. So in their statement released just hours after the SEC's lawsuit against Impact Theory, the dissenting commissioners raised several thought-provoking questions for the SEC to consider. They emphasised the unique characteristics of NFTs and the challenges in categor categorising them for regulatory purposes. Yeah, that's the trouble. There's so many different types of NFTs. We do know that NFTs eventually are going to become just mainstream boring things as well as of course of the speculative assets and all of that that'll be part of it but um you're gonna you're talking about rewards cards gift cards um deeds to houses uh your driver's license everything like that's probably going to end up nft -ified, i would imagine at some stage especially when you're talking about digital currencies and last week how we we mentioned social credit scores it does get a bit greasy but i think Regardless, NFTs are going to have a very um, big role to play in all of that. And then yada, yada, yada. So this is next article. I think it might be this one. Yeah. So this might be the one that they're talking about. So the SEC sued an NFT project that promised to build the next Disney. Well, straight away, if there's an NFT project out there saying, oh, we're going to be the next Disney, it's kind of a bit red flaggy just from the get-go there. So we already said that they, they made about $30 million and they had to pay back. 6.1 million now why well, what's the language at play here so it says impact theory urged potential investors to consider purchasing a key nft as an investment in the company ouch people would benefit from their purchases if the company were successful in their efforts adds the sec complaint according to its website impact theory was founded in 2016 uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep. Uh, the SEC order found that impact theories and NFTs were in fact investments, contracts, and therefore securities. Yeah. If, if they've come out and say, you're going to benefit from buying this NFT if our company is successful, um, that's most NFT projects. They're like that. Oh, look at that itchy skin thing. Add yuck. Most NFT projects are like that, even you know, uplands like that as well. If if you buy property NFTs, you're going to get some kickbacks with your with your dividends rates and that the other thing. Are they promising returns? I don't know. That's where you got to be very careful of on how you word these things. So interesting here. The company agreed to pay more than six million in fines and destroying all the NFTs which are still under their control. However, of course, most of the vast majority of those wouldn't be if they made $30 million. Um, Impact Theory will also remove any royalties you may have received from selling these NFTs on secondary markets. Ouch. He announced, uh, old mate announced on Twitter that there was an agreement with the SEC and promised to work on the future of the company with new projects. So I wonder how if and how people are going to get caught up in that. If they purchase these, they're considered as securities. If they've then gone on to sell them on secondary markets, we do know, of course, that a lot of this stuff is considered capital gains and capital gain tax implications. But And then you throw in all this complexity on the top of that. Oh, boy. That could get very, 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 very confusing and get yourself in a world of trouble very quickly. 
So what does it say here? The agency later filed charges against smart contract auditing firm Quantstamp for conducting initial coin offering and ICO and shortly thereafter sued influencer blah, blah, for millions of dollars. Yeah, through an ICO, yeah. So it just goes to show, you know, all of this is highly speculative. You can't go into any of this sort of stuff. You can't go into it using money you can't afford to lose, you know. Of course, that's not financial advice. Do whatever the hell you want to do, but yeah, you can't. You just can't. The people, you see them, oh, I mortgaged me house and I, I purchased a board eight yacht club and now I bought it for 250K and now it's worth 35K. Well, you know, oh, what do you say to those people? It's There's always the headlines like back in the 2017, 2018 pumping up days with the crypto. There's people doing that and you know, buying obscure coins and then riding the pump and yeah, woohoo, you're a millionaire. But for every one of those stories, there's probably 50 or more wrecked stories. Um, yeah. Don't invest more than you're willing to lose. It just, it can't, it shouldn't get any more complicated than that. You know, Upland could very easily just disappear one day. It could be bought out and closed down. Who knows? It's just a thousand different things can, can go wrong. Um, not that that's trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. The old fight is just a bit of a reality check. I know you see this sometimes in Upland General where a lot of the people that tend to kind of get a bit rage quitty and a bit fuddy, like, oh, it's all a scam, blah, 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 I've lost all my money. Well, you just got to really think about your motivations of how you came into the space. Um, sometimes I don't think Upland helps themselves with the way they talk about some things, you know. Is it an investment platform? Is it a game? They seem to be moving further and further away from calling it a, a game themselves. Now it's a, um, what do they call it? It's a, a super app. You know. Would you download it? Would, when you downloaded Facebook, um, that could be considered a super app. You can do all sorts of stuff on there. Were you expecting to make money from Facebook, the app itself, or did you buy shares in Facebook? They're, those two things are very separate. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, Lily says, effectively sold shares, blame others for their decisions. Play and earn is the new term, I think. Yeah, play to earn. Um, people, some people just think they're going to buy these properties and immediately flip them for 2x or 10x. Yeah. Is, yeah. I don't know. Not financial advice. Wreck yourself however you want, but yeah. Just always got to keep that in mind. You could literally wake up in the morning, go to turn Upland or any sort of crypto Web3 app, and it's just not going to be there. This could very, very easily happen. I think up, one of the, the good things about Upland, especially when you're talking about the SEC, is Upland, all through its hist history, ha appears to have really towed the line with what they can and can't do, especially you know being basically a US-based company. They got to play by the, the rules there, so... Yeah, I think that's um. I think we're in good hands. Put it that way. In-game currency keeps it neat. Yeah, it's, I've speculated about that myself. Like I've mentioned that before. When when I first started playing Upland, there was no USD out system. That wasn't. It was kind of spoken loosely about, but it was just pretty much a game with an in-game currency. Um, then the USD system came online and there was a better testing period. I actually won a place in the very first, I think it was the, might have been 10 better testers or something like that. And then I gave it away. I was like, hell no, I don't want anything to do with that. So I gave my position away in the better and then fast forward a couple of years and I've started to get involved because it's, it's just, it's still not clear. Like the Australian Taxation Department is still trying to get their head around crypto and NFTs as it is, let alone something like oh, this is a game. And yes, I have, I have purchased some imaginary property in this game and that has generated me an in-game currency that I've then sold for USD. And then I've taken that USD out, of, out and I've paid fees in Upland. I've paid fees to a platform called Tilia. I've then sent that to my PayPal and I've paid fees to send that to my bank account. So it's very, very messy. So I know when I did my tax return this year, I just took whatever the Australian equivalent was that I pulled out. 
I just put that down as income with a zero cost basis. So I paid the maximum amount of tax possible for that. Um, did I sell myself short there? Probably. There's probably a way to do it where you could say, well, you know, this this actually cost me such and such, and then I pulled out such and such, but it's just so bloody confusing. Especially when you're talking about um, one property that you might have, like one of my um, Wall Street properties or something like that, that generates a lot of a lot of dividends. It also gets a lot of visitor traffic. Like how do you classify all that? You're going to separate what is dividends, what's visitor traffic. You're going to put it all in. Are you going to have to work at a conversion to Australian dollars to work at a cost uh, you know, a cost basis for how much this cost when you went to sell it is just way too, way too confusing. So that's why I just went, no, I'll just, I'll just eat the maximum and just say, this cost me zero and I sold it for 10 bucks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and a lot of people don't think of that. If, if you're just pulling, if you're just pulling USD out wildly, um, it's, whatever you're connected to, you've done KYC in Upland to be able to be part of the USD out system. You've done KYC through Tilia to be part of that system. If it's linked to your PayPal account, you've done you've done KYC to there. And they all report to the tax department. So, yeah. A business in a game is still a business for tax. Yeah, absolutely. I did, um, I talked to my sister kind of the, towards the end of last year, I was nearly going to register an ABN an Australian business number myself, just for pulling out the USD. Yeah, I probably maybe will. And that that's another point too, where that gets a bit tricky as well. Like um, when Samurai Aquatics and Decor had their first sales, that first bank of sales was USD sales. Now all of that USD went into buying Spark at the next um, next Spark week so that we could, you know, manufacture more. So that currency hasn't come out of the game. So is that a taxable event? Should you have paid taxes on that? I, who knows? Who knows? Yes. Yeah, it's a fitch problem. Not until it comes out. Yeah, that, that was my thinking as well. Like, yeah, that, that's how I've run with it. That's how I will play it out. Um, yeah, if until it actually comes out of the system. But then that's not how crypto works. So... I, I just don't know. I really don't know. Crypto works with every single trade you do, even if it's a coin swap, that is a that is a capital gains taxable, taxable event. So if you've swapped an in-game currency, you've essentially swapped your in-game currency um, UPX. You've swapped that for kind of in-game cur currency USD. You haven't taken that out, but there still is a transfer there. So I don't know. Yeah. Just tread cautiously with all of that and try and capture as much data as you can. I know it's like, it's impossible to track what I have bought, sold over the, what am I now? Four, over four years playing up playing. Imagine trying to track every transaction you've done in the game and relating that to, to Australian dollars for, via US dollars. It'd just be impossible. So every single dollar that I take out. Yeah. That's all. That's all accounted for. Wonder if the tax trackers will add upland like they do for Coinspot or Binance. Yeah, that's that's what we don't know. We don't know. It's on the blockchain. So theoretically, if the regulators were to come down and say, yes, all of those were capital gains event, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think it will. I think it's going to be more, yeah, it's more second life. I, I think so too. But no, just um, I always try to plan for the worst. Hope for the best and plan for the worst. That's the saying, isn't it? So, got to cover yourself. But yeah, if you, definitely if you're pulling any money out, just make sure you're covering all that because yeah, PayPal will report. Always pay your taxes. Yes, the tax man, the tax ladies, they've got very long memories. And especially the other part where it gets a bit greasy too is they put in all these retroactive tax laws. So, who knows? I think as I've had. I got absolutely shafted by the tax man who gave me advice about um, my crypto buying and spending directly. This was a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the tax department. They just gave me completely incorrect advice. And then I spent the next two years trading with that advice, which was all wrong. So, 
So even if you get the information, it's it's it might not be the correct information two, three years later. So yeah, the more that you can document it all, the better for your future self. Try and protect your future self as much as possible. So that was the SEC stuff. We're not going to end on that though. Although we do have to dive down in. See what other horrible stuff's going on. Oh, no, there was one other extra one, which, again, what do you know? That's the SEC again. Sorry, I went on a bit of a wild rant there. SEC's impact on cryptocurrency expansion, expert reveals US regulatory challenges. So, again, this is that was about NFTs. Um, they're still trying to get their head around crypto. And then, what do you know, NFTs is all over the place. So. As I say, in a recent interview with Thinking Crypto, Paolo Tasca, co-founder and chairman of the DLT Science Foundation, blah, 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 has said some light on the long-standing oversight of the cryptocurrency markets by US regulators. Tasca pointed out the detrimental impact of the lack of transparency and regulatory certainty on the industry's growth. And I think that's that's a huge point. This is such all of this is such an at an early phase, um, the wild, wild west, as they call it. Um, it's tricky there in the wild, wild west, people get burnt, people make a lot of money, but you kind of, the regulators have to ride the line where they got to kind of, in some ways they got to protect people from themselves, but they also got to try not to squash, you know, how this thing develops and grows. Um, it is a, I do appreciate that's a tricky line for them to ride. I don't think it's helped that a lot of these people, that are regulators, they're like a billion years old and haven't even got a clue what anybody's talking about. So the lack of clarity and its consequences, yeah, that's the big thing. What does it say here? The enforcement-centric approach taken by regulator bodies is inhibiting the industry's progress. Yes. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing that you know some of those other projects, they get pulled up and say, hang on, you can't do that because then that gets everybody else to say, oh, okay, well, we better not try and do that because that's not right. So, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, I think this subheading here, the unique complexity of the US crypto scene, reflecting on the current state of affairs, Tasco noted that the uniqueness and complexity of the situation, he recalled his previous support for establishing clear and equitable regulations for the cryptocurrency industry. He cited a common regulatory trend where emerging markets are initially overlooked then subjected to regulation attempts and eventually abandoned if those attempts fail. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're talking about. Yes, Tasco observed a remarkable 14-year period during which the burgeoning market was largely neglected since the inception of Bitcoin. This neglect, he argued, has resulted, resulted in a deficiency of essential rules that could benefit investors, users, and pioneers in the industry. Yeah, that's a big problem. The... The whole Web3 crypto NFT metaverse sector is moving at such a rapid pace. All of this is emerging tech. By the time by the time the regulators get their head around some aspects of it and try and put in rules in place for that, it's, the sector's already moved on and they're doing something else. So very hard. So I don't envy them the task of trying to do it. Anyhow. So that's what's happening in Web3. Let's have a very brief look at what's happening in the meat suit of us. Have we got any good news this week? Last week, it was all doom and gloom. What's happening in Australia? What the voice will be and what it isn't? Yes, we do have the big yes, no vote coming up. I don't believe they've announced the date yet, but it's apparently assumed to be mid-October. So keep your eyes out on that one. Power Bank recalled over fire concerns. End of an era for Aussie. Iconic Aussie brand. What? No bigger cheese. What? An iconic homegrown brand has been snapped up. Oh, let me guess. China's probably bought another brand, have they? Airport chaos sparked by thunderstorms. Girl badly hurt. Oh, bad news in Australia. Beloved cat drowns. No good news in Australia. Let's see what's happening in Kiwi land. From unseemly teen to a professor with highest academic honour. Breaking boundaries is nothing new for Emeritus Professor Agalia T. Old mate, who has been made a companion of the Royal Society to Aparangi. Apologies. National Party releases full 14.6B tax plan. Ouch. One dead in Waikato crash. 
Nationals, 180 million in gambling tax, doesn't it end up? Beautiful parents killed. Ah, oh, what's so bad? Bad, 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 bad. Oh, this is a big problem in Australia too. Here we go. Youths compete to steal cars amid unprecedented crime wave. That's a massive problem in our area. Do you care teenagers stealing cars? Because they know they can get away with it scot free. Maybe there's some good news in Japan. Reputational damage over Fukushima water feed to widen in China. Yes, China loves to point the finger. But if you look at, if you actually look at the the stats on what is being released and how much of what, and then you find out, do a comparable a comparison with some of the um, the outputs in China, India, Indonesia. It's yeah, it's a drop in the ocean, as they say. What else? Japanese government panel proposes introducing joint custody after divorce. Whoa, I know a number of expats who have just been utterly crushed because of Japan's brutal um, lack of joint custody laws, shall I say. So ooh, that's that's been a long time coming, that one. Japan's birth rate falls 3.6%. Yes, yes, yes. Japan driving school holds special drunk driving lesson. What? As we experienced firsthand in our series on getting a driver's license in Japan, this test course is no joke. Driving through it constitutes an extensive check of your driving abilities and perception in a number of different skill sets, including tight S turns and the dreaded chicane like section. Well, I'm going to read that one later. Special drunk driving lesson, Japan. Japan's moon landing, when is it and why it is important, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. All right, so there's a couple of cool ones here. It's not all bad. Where are you? That's big. Yes. Let me get up to speed and close those down. Bye bye, meet Sudabus. Oh, yes. As we're winding up now, I'll skip ahead for this before we do the quips. Um, this is kind of some personal news. And with the UDU, the MTU 100 track, the uh, speedway in Midtown Terrace, has been approved. And the speed Speedway Metaventure building is currently under construction at 28 Aqua Vista Way. So that's pretty cool. I did have this ready. I wonder if it'll reload. No. There it is right there. 28 Aqua Vista Way right in front of Summer Aquatics and Decor. Look, I'm pretty schmick. So I was actually pretty surprised to get that email because I was almost certain that that property was going to be just a little touch too small to fit the structure on. But it did so... Whew, as you can see, barely, barely. There was literally whatever the equivalent of millimeters is, is in UPX. UPX, milli, milli UPs? I don't know. There's got to be a term there for it somewhere. So, yes, only just fit. So, as part of that, I have to make a correction. Um, last week in the show, I was rambling on about the speedway structure being built for the Interlagos circuit. Um, it turns out that the two, two pit bay speedway metaventure building, us plebs are building, like the one in MTU, Midtown Terrace, they're in fact the medium-sized ones, not the large ones, as I incorrectly stated last week. So that therefore probably means that the Interlagos track is an example of the large three pit bay size ones. But again, we'll have to wait and see. I assume so. All right, that brings us on to quips. If you don't know what quips are, quips stands for questions, insights, provocations, and statements. There's a link in the description. It's a Google form. You can drop something in there. Um, you got something to say, and we'll probably use it on the show, and you'll win yourself some kind of prize. Now, this first one was submitted by somebody anonymously. They didn't put their upland username in there, so I can't give them any prize if this was you and you can somehow prove that it was you well then i'll fix you up on the back end so as i said this week someone anonymously asked could upland come up with a better way to handle taxes meaning fees i believe it's frustrating to adjust for just buyers or sellers senders and receivers to eat 100 of the taxes could slash should they implement a button that adjusts who pays the taxes just like in real life home sales for example, seller could eat the taxes and list a property for a true price. Buyer pays what they see. It mostly affects layer two creators and contest organizers. Yep. Could this help the property markets? Um, I guess there's, there's two major questions there. Could they improve the system? Well, yes, like anything they could. Um, 
I struggle this with this myself. Like we just said, we with this sex segment, I give away five thousand upex. Previously, when I used to do this, I used to just send I send five thousand. So it would have cost me five thousand plus the five percent, and the recipient would receive five thousand minus the fee on their end. But I've since started to make sure that the the winners receive the amount was stated. So yeah, I have to go on my calculator and do five thousand times one point oh five, and it doesn't work out exactly like that. I think I do one point oh five two or something. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain. I know upexland.me has a little toggle when you're doing property searches in there. There's a little toggle there. Do you want fees added? Yes or no? That's I'm sure they could implement something like that. I'd love a toggle like that. It'd be super handy, especially with all the giveaways. And when you're making offers, you know, if there's been certain situations where, you know, people say no offers above a certain amount, and then you've got to sit there and work out, well, how much can I actually send and still still be above that amount? I think that would be a positive addition, a positive change. Um, second part of that was could this help the property markets? I don't think so. I don't think it would do anything really for properties, maybe minor, but it'd be only a select level of people. I think it would just be um, just be a quality of life update. Yeah, quality of life update. Impressive neighbourhood you have there, Ben. Oh, thank you, Swally. I have been at it for a while. Midtown Terrace being the first node and whatnot. So yeah, but the Upland Development United team, it's going gangbusters there for quite a while. Don't be jealous. I'm just a knucklehead player, just like everyone else. Just have a plan and stick to it. So, yes, that was the first quips. Thank you for that. That's that's a good one to think about. I would definitely, if there was a toggle there to use that, that's something that I would definitely use, especially, like I said, when you're as a contest organizer or a prize giver, giver a wayer, I would definitely use that. So next up this evening, we've got Angry Ursia has is back to win another 5,000 Upex and asks, will Protem Totem have a functional use in Upland to generate market interest? I suspect it will be a mini game that you must keep up with or risk losing the asset, similar to cows in Uplandia. The best case scenario I'm seeing is that keeping up with this mini game will generate more assets that you can sell. Unfortunately, as more are sold, more can be made and the value will only go down. A few questions there. Will Protem Totem have a functional use in Upland to generate market interest? Yes, because there is a, there's a, just the limited supply alone means there's a FOMO aspect. Um, so yeah, there's, there's going to be secondary markets. There's going to be a whole bunch of stuff. You will see there will be people who they're all about the dragonflies. They want to have all the dragonflies. They want to, there's people that are collectors. They want to have the full set of all the different colors. That will absolutely be a thing. And that will generate, drive the markets. Um, that's pretty much guaranteed. Um, second question, I expect it will be a mini game that you must keep up with or risk losing the asset. Well, you're not going to lose the asset. You're just not going to be able to get the maximum potential out of it. Like I said, I, I do want to buy one of these things. Am I going to get up every two hours to click a button to do something? Hell no. I've got no interest in that at all. Um, you will, from what we've been led to believe, you will still be able to you know, get some of the attributes out of it if you don't maximize the potential. Um, and like at the end of this, as Lily mentioned previously, you're still going to have the, it's it's the base function is it's a map asset. It's an outdoor decor piece. So you're always going to have that. And like I said, there's always going to be collectors. There's always going to be people that want to go buy and go back and buy all the original stuff so that there will always be a market related to that. Um, and who knows, like you've mentioned there, mini games, um, layer two stuff, perhaps people will take that on board. You've mentioned Uplandia, perhaps they'll incorporate that in with their layer two stuff. Who knows? And um, yeah, that's, you've mentioned an important point there where you've got an, something that's generating assets that you can sell. Well, that's kind of like Spark. You know, you buy Spark, you earn Spark, you can build, you can do stuff. Um as more are sold, more can be made. The value will only go down. Yeah, it's. I think with a lot of that stuff, it comes back to we need, we need some layer one functionality, some utility that comes directly from Upland. I still think it's, you know, if I'm going to put on my whiny hat, I still think it's pretty 
average that we have such a limited building supply. Like you look at Tokyo, there's all these townhouses being put up in Tokyo apartment buildings. It's so bizarre. Or even, you know, some of the buildings in Rio will, you know, will the user generated content take care of that in the future? Yes, but that's a very slow moving process. Is there any point to building a building now? Does it add value to your property? Well, yes, technically you can run a meta venture. Technically there are some layer two projects that are out there, um, but you know, just some, some baseline functionality utility. Give us a little bit of a UPEX boost. Give us a 5% UPEX boost for having a property, for having a certain asset, for having a totem, a protem. That, it would make such a huge difference. Kind of drives me bonkers that they don't do it. Yeah, but they seem to be just leaning further and further away from that and pushing it further and further into a layer two. So I don't know. But that's pretty good question. That one, pretty good question there. We'll have, I guess for some of that, we'll just have to wait and see. So cheers for that, Angry Osa. You've grabbed yourself another 5,000 UPEX. And don't forget that while quips can be submitted anonymously, as I said, you must add your upland in-game name to your submissions if you want to get compensated for your efforts. And that pretty much brings us almost to the end of the show. Last week, we had a competition in the MVA server that was in the contest channel in the MVA server. Let us know what you think about the upcoming stock cars release and what do you think the base prices of that first batch will be? Price is going to be 5,000 UPEX clear after fees. Let's see if Wheel of Names is going to play nice. It is. Thank you to who we got here. Angry Ursia, NFT Architect, Cassastra, and Laban. You all have a chance for the 5,000 UPEX. Um, very easy to do this one. As I said, just jump into the NBA server. Well, first of all, you got to listen to the show so you know what it's all about. And I think Angry Ursia might have it. NFT Architect. Angry Ursia. Look at that. Angry Ursia, just by being minimalistically involved in this show, has picked up 10,000 UPEX. Not bad. What about effort for the week to add to the 5,000 you got last week? Well done. And thank you very much. So that was last week's challenge. Now, oh, I should go back and say, what did Angry Ursia say? So Angry Ursia said, for the stock, stock cart racing, I don't anticipate much hype interest, at least compared to the early car sales, meaning the S1Rs and the S1Es, etc. I think there is more interest in trucks in in anticipation of transportation. That's a good point. I've got a truck. Where's my bloody trailer? When are the, when's all that going to happen? Uh, it goes on to say, we already can race with what we have. So faster cars aren't needed. They, meaning stock cars, will be a new category anyway. So our current cars aren't at risk of falling further behind in their respective categories. Yes. Um, da, 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 da. That was it. All right. What else do we say? I'll just have a look. Um, NFT Architect think, thinks they'll be more expensive than S1. Wow, all right. Cassastra said the think the stock cars will be very expensive, but maybe some base models, not the one or twos, could be under 300K. Um, Cass is hyped for that. Uh, LeBan agrees with Angry Ursa. There will be some hype, but not for the general population. I think the people are want, waiting for more gamification on their existing cars transportation travel those who have normal ones and they already can race their cars yeah yes i've been thinking about that a bit myself like the stock cars basically they're just a fancy car that we've already got that are reskinned now we do know back when back when the whole talk about cars was being revealed there was talk that there was going to be there was going to be a meta venture where you could take your car and you could get a change color you could get a skin put on it so who knows that's good points. So if it's going to be one of those RNG battles again, I will register as much as I hate doing it. And I always push against it. I will do it and I'll see how I go and it depends on the prices. All right. So that brings us up to this week's challenge. Very similar to last week's. This week's challenge is to get yourself into the NBA server and let us know what you think about the upcoming totems release. And what do you think the base prices on those will be? So very similar to last week. Once again, that's the in the MBA server. You have to find the MBA contest channel. Um, you'll see there's a bunch of posts there from this week. 
and let us know what you think about totems and how much they're going to be. Again, prize will be 5,000 up X clear after fees. If you don't know what the NBA server is or how to get to it, link is going to be in the description for both YouTube and the Spotify. And that means there's just two more things to do. One of them is to say goodbye. And one of them, I need to go to see who we had in chats. Now, I don't think I don't think we had anybody who jumped in and out, did we? I don't think so. So we got Lily Laban. Lily Laban. Oh, there was somebody, wasn't there? Let me go back. No, no, no. Yeah, I wonder, who was that? Swale. Oh, you updated your name. All right. Swale. Aha. Nearly tricked us. All right, let me pull that up then. So we got Lily Ban and Swale. I just looked at that, and apologies if I spelt that wrong. So thank you for jumping in. Don't forget, if I'm ranting and raving, you can jump in at any time with your own biased opinions. That's very much appreciated. Let's see who's going to win. Oh, she's finally done it. Hey, hey, hey. 5,000 on the way for Lily. Thank you very much. All right. And that, my friends, is the end of that. Um, let me check that out. I didn't... I've, I did... Was going to do a short show this week, but um, ended up ranting and raving all over the place. Apologies for that. Um, hopefully you got through this at 2x speed. A reminder that if you are in a time zone that fits in with the Wednesday night recording schedule of starting at 7.30 p.m. AEST and you'd like to get involved, the link to the weekly Zoom will always be dropped in the NBA server about 15 minutes before the show starts. Um, I was this afternoon. I was playing around. I think I'm going to mix up the... I think I'm going to mix up the some of the city stats and that we cover at the front end. Um, do a bit more scope. I'd like to cover a bit more of the of the uh, the community and the different cities because you know there's only I think there's only ten cities that we've been focused on, and that's mainly just because of some of the flippage that I do buy for UPX itself for USD. So if you've got any ideas for what you'd like to see there, sling me a DM and I'll see what I can put together. See what happens. All right. That's it for this week, Upland Down Under Podcast. Thank you very much for checking us out once again, and we'll catch up with you later. This entertainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor.